What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And today's a chess day, we are at the gym Van Drunen in the Netherlands. Down south, where my brother is always training. He is right now in Mexico, but here is also the Vintage Genetics store, which we just did the orders for. So right now, we're just going to train some chess, which is always nice. Trying out some different machines again. This one here is a decline or a straight chest press, doesn't really matter as long as you feel the chest really well. So let's get started with this one, warming up first. So we are getting started on the wide grip chest press. This is called a wide grip chest press or just a wide chest press because when you stretch out, the grip or you know the position of your hands is quite wide and the wider it is the more of a stretch you can achieve this is why i also like well i liked in the past to do a lot of wide grip bench presses for example just like arnold schwarzenegger did as well with the best chest in the history of bodybuilding so when i did that i noticed a much better blood flow inside the muscle so if you're able to do this without any shoulder pain and with a good alignment in the machine in terms of stacking your arms and your chest on top of each other then it's a great thing to do a wide grip for sure we're doing a couple of working sets for each movement and I'm going to show you one warm-up usually for each movement but all of the working sets so this was working set number one the heaviest weight four plates aside and then I'm doing a working set number two with three and a half plates aside so with a second working set which means a set of failure at least that's the set that will count towards muscle growth you don't have to lower the weight that much when it feels very smooth in the first set. Yes, you're pretty much hitting failure at like seven or eight reps maybe. Then you still don't have to lower the weight by that much because if it's a smooth movement and it feels very good, it's still good to hit a second working set with, you know, almost as heavy as a weight with slightly more reps when you're doing three working sets like right here. So now I'm doing three plates aside and that allows you to do 14 reps. So now I did at least two whole different rep ranges. So the first one was like an eight to 10 rep range, the second one at 10 to 12, and this one is a 12 to 14 rep range basically. So lowering the weight, but upping the amount of reps that will stimulate the muscles in different ways. And when you log these lifts in your logbook, you know which weights to beat at which rep ranges. Okay guys, the next movement, the incline chest press. So we just did like a hybrid of a, a decline and a regular chest press. It's called the wide chest press actually. So depending on your seat, you can make it a decline or a regular chest press. This is the incline, which for sure is different than the one you did before. We're pressing upwards, meaning we're going to target the upper pecs. And the handles will also converge, meaning they will contract the pecs much better. Let's go. So, as I mentioned, the second movement is the incline version of what we just did. But look here, the grip isn't as wide because here, and it really depends on the machine as well, but here the squeeze is that much more amazing. Okay guys, as you know, this is one of the many oversized shirts available on the website. Link down below, but of course, for training chest, you also should be wearing a tank top, which we are wearing right now. So this, as we all know, is the pump cover for the filled with blood tank top. Let's go. Oh yes, you just can't do a chest workout without a tank top and especially one that gives you the freedom of letting your muscles breathe with the dropped armhole tank top and of course they are filled with blood. Anyway, the first working set here is almost three plates so it's a lot heavier than the first movement. It would be strange for an incline movement to be 
easier than a flat or a decline movement because of the leverages, they are different. As you can see, I'm not going all the way up because if I do that, the front delt will be involved. So what you want to do is when you're doing an incline press like this or even an, a regular chest press, pretty much almost any press, you retract the shoulder blade, so you put them back and then perform the press. Then you protect your shoulders, but at the same time, squeeze and darken the chest that much more. So guys, I take an intra workout. In the intra workout, there's of course water, but also beetroot juice, EAAs, creatine, L-carnitine, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, Hydro Surge and uh, did I mention beetroot juice? That is one of the best things to take intro workout to get a filled with blood muscle pump. So I'm having one of these, another shaker right there for about two liters of water every single workout. And to me, hydration is simply that important because hydration stands for building muscle, having being strong losing fat, being healthy, and simply detoxifying your entire body in general. So it's a very important thing to do, stay hydrated. And the reason why you shouldn't just drink only water, it is very good, but if you really want to get the max out of your workout, you add things into the water that will hydrate your body even more and add some effects to make the workout that much better, like pump inducing nutrients, like muscle breakdown preventing nutrients like EAAs, and of course hydro surge to hydrate even more. What I also put in my intro workout shake is some Himalayan pink salt. Because in my opinion, that is one of the things you lose the most during a workout. Whenever you sweat, you also lose electrolytes, you use, lose salt, potassium, magnesium, etc. So that's what you want to replenish during the training. And if you really want to get a very good pump in combination with a Jack Factory pre-workout, adding in some Himalayan pink salt, starting out with half a teaspoon, will bring you a much better pump. I can guarantee you that. So, talking about this incline chest press for one more set, what you wanna do is retract the shoulder blades to make sure the chest is engaged, and then go all the way up until the chest is fully contracted. If you can see, my arms don't go all the way straight up, because if they do, the only other thing that would happen is the contraction of the uh, triceps, because that extends the arm, and then the front delts would start to work to round my shoulders out. That is exactly what you want to prevent to prevent injury. Okay, so this one is going to be a fly variation. You can do dumbbell flies, cable flies, or a machine like this. The benefit of a machine is that you have constant tension on the muscle, the stretch and the contraction. We're not going to do any warm-ups here because we already are warmed up. It's a light movement, higher reps, full range of motion. Let's do this. Yes, as I mentioned, there are very many different kinds of peg deck machines or fly machines, cable flies, dumbbell flies, etc. So you should simply pick the one that feels the best. Now I am lucky enough that my mind muscle connection in the chest is pretty good. So pretty much regardless of the type of fly that I choose, I feel it very well just in the chest and nowhere else. So some people feel it more in the front delt, some even feel it in the biceps. But if you keep your arms locked in this position, not all the way straight, but not bent all the way either, then you will uh, really only use the chest and the triceps and front delts are minimally involved, pretty much not involved at all, which makes it an isolation movement for the chest. That's why I like ending with a fly motion because then you make sure that you finish off the chest completely. During a fly, what is very important, get a very good stretch. So I'm going all the way back until I feel a good stretch, muscle fiber tearing in the chest. And then when I go all the way 
uh, back forward, I could track the chest as hard as I can. Those are the two sensations you want to feel during this movement. So a stretch sensation and a contraction sensation or a squeeze. If you can't feel both, then the fly isn't optimal. And that is the reason why dumbbell flies are not the best kind of flies to do uh, if you could only choose for one type of fly. But in some situations, when you already got an incredible pump, the dumbbell fly emphasizes a stretch a lot. So if you got an incredible pump, getting in the dumbbell fly is a great way to stretch the chest the best possible way, in my opinion, because gravity combined with the dumbbells simply provides an incredible stretch. And sometimes the cables or a machine like this, you can't go that heavy with it to provide that stretch because throughout the entire range of motion, you have tension on the chest, which makes it a more difficult movement, which, you know, forces you to lower the weight. And those are called myo reps, meaning every time that you feel the lactic acid disappear after the set, you do as many reps as you can until failure, repeat it a couple of times, two, three, four times until the pump is maximized. Okay guys, it's time for the side lateral raise. Just like the, the previous movement, you can do this in a machine as well for constant tension, but the tension, just like with the dumbbell, will be lessened a whole lot at the bottom because right now I can just sit like this, no problem. But as I go up, the tension, of course, is increased exponentially. We're gonna do as many reps as we can here. No warm up required, so let's do this. So personally, I always like doing the side dumbbell lateral raise because it gives me just a very good connection and a very good pump. As I mentioned, at the bottom, there is little tension, but if you do enough volume and if you do you know, enough concentrated reps, so really on the side delts and not the traps, you can get a really good burn and pump in the side delts and that is what you need to make them grow in my opinion. You simply cannot overload the side delts with super heavy weights without involving different muscles like the traps and even the front delts. So if you want quality side delt voluminous muscles, cannonball delts, then to grow the side delts you simply need quality reps with high volume. So high volume uh, to me in the first set is 20 to 25 reps, the second set at least 15 to 20 reps, but after that set you still go with alternating reps until you truly hit failure. So we're about to hit though that failure point um, at this both arms at the same time exercise, and then once I hit a point where I can't complete those quality reps anymore without involving the traps, then I move to alternating reps because every time that one arm goes up, the other arm is allowed to rest, extending the set beyond the failure point I previously had, and that is what causes muscle growth. And for those who don't follow me for that long, I always like combining the side delts with the chest because it's such a synergy working them both together. All right, it's time for the triceps. The first movement is always a push down, at least for me, to warm up the joints, the elbows, to get blood in the muscle, to also make the last tricep movement more effective because then the stretch is maximized. And then it is time for the triceps. Now over the years, I keep learning how to perfect my tricep movements to really make my triceps grow because they've always been a medium point. I won't say a weak point, but not a strong point either. So pretty much an average point but my biceps have always been a stronger point. So then what you have is an imbalance in the arms. That is not what you want. The same thing I have with the, with the legs. The quads aren't as bad anymore. They're actually almost up to par on the front with my upper body, except my hamstrings are not. So there's also an imbalance there. So I focus more on the hamstrings than on the quads in terms of starting with the hamstrings first. But with the triceps, it's all about finding the proper way of execution. 
just like with the hamstrings, you want to be able to feel the contraction and feel the stretch and get blood in the muscle. If you can't do those three things, the muscle simply won't grow to the size other muscles do, or you do feel those, those three things. So here, my elbow and my shoulder and my wrist, they are all as much as I possibly can in line with each other. So I'm trying to do this press pretty much shoulder width so that my wrist and my shoulder are aligned. And then I'm trying to keep my elbows to the inside of my body, you know, aiming to properly align the arm and making sure the triceps are doing the work and not the joints or the tendons being messed up. And it's always good to check your shape when you have quite a good pump to see exactly where you stand with a maximized amount of blood in the muscle. Last one guys, as I mentioned, the push down causes a tricep pump filled with blood, of course. And the pump makes it much easier to get a stretch in the triceps on, for example, a tricep dip like this. When going all the way up and feeling the stretch, that's what causes growth. So let's do this one for as many reps as we can. Oh, that's actually quite heavy. <laughs> All right, so this is a dip machine. So normally this is for chest dips. And honestly, this first set was a little too heavy. This machine doesn't provide kilograms and some other machines don't either. So whenever I don't put the weight down at the description of how many and you know, what kind of exercise it is, it means that it's like one to 12 of weight increments and there's no weight attached. So I have no idea how heavy it was, but it was quite heavy in terms of almost not being able to do the uh, exercise properly. So the aim here is to let the arms go up as much as possible without the chest and the front delts taking over and where you do feel a good stretch in the triceps. Now, when I review this footage, I'm not going up as far as I thought I was because the feeling associated with this exercise, with this rep range, actually felt a lot uh, longer. I, it felt like I was stretching the triceps a lot more than it seemed like in this video. And ultimately, it's mostly also about what you feel. If you, again, if you feel a good stretch, if you feel a good contraction and you get a good pump in the muscle, and then yeah, you are working the muscle properly. So when you look at this angle, you can see I'm going up as high as I can. If I would go up higher, simply my traps would go up as well and my chest and front delts would be helping. So it might just be that this machine isn't properly aligned for my personal anatomy, not allowing me to do the exercise perfectly. But again, the tricep dips, it's one of the best movements to do for tricep mass. And now I have to keep talking for a while because I don't want this video to be copyrighted because of the background music. All right, guys, that was the workout of the day. Chest, side delts, and triceps. Now it's time for the post-rocket meal, which will simply be rice with chicken and a banana, plenty of carbs, some Himalayan pink salt, of course, and alongside a Jacked Factory whey isolate shake. Check the link down below for discount code for all of the supplements. And check out VintageGenetics.com for all your classic clothing, apparel, and work and nutrition plans. And don't forget to stay golden.